folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. I'm back to doing a movie review this week, since last week was my Blu-ray review of Good Burger that I got recently at Amazon for only $9.99. Sweet deal. The transfer is just excellent for the, the video quality. High definition, with more details than all. So, very flawless. And the audio is even better to join in but it only had one special feature and that was uh, the Good Burger skit from the original All That it was part of the pilot episode but it was a four minute skit and it was still as hilarious as it could be and the movie is still as hilarious as I remembered and always will be no matter how old you are but it deserves better with all the features joining in and, and sadly it's not included so you have to end up creating your own special feature disc or so but otherwise it's a great release for what it is but anyway but I'm also trying to keep up with the commercial breaks that I found online so just to make the channel thriving with more subs going around so I'm getting better and better as it follows so now, I'm going to prepare myself to review a romantic comedy that came out on April 23rd, 2004, which has the kid in all of us, <laughs> and that is 13 Going On 30, which is essentially the plot directly from the movie that I have right here, <laughs> Big. <laughs> which is told in a male's perspective whereas this movie is told on a female's perspective <laughs> yeah right there <laughs> of course both body switching movies in a way um, the difference here though is that it's a story about an outsider teenage girl who's just about to be ready to turn 13 years old who suddenly wishes to become flirty, flirty, and thriving. And that's how she essentially became Jennifer Gardner, <laughs> right there. Yeah, wearing this uh, very gorgeous uh, nightie right there. <laughs> well, you can see it on the back, too. And, of course, she will soon be able to fall in love, which she made a big mistake, but now she'll be able to. Uh, to fall in love with her best friend, former, who's a photographer. He's played by Mark Buffalo. And with, what do you know, Electra and Bruce Banner together. <laughs> yeah, the Hulk himself. Well, yeah. Anyway, um, I just got this recently on Blu-ray at Goodwill for only, um, surprisingly, uh, Five dollars wasn't a bad deal. And, well, it was actually part of the uh, tax sales, but I had to end up getting it anyway because why not? I wanted to have a significant upgrade to my uh, previous DVD that I own, which is the Fun and Flirty edition. Uh, it's in the cabinet though, but I'm not going to take it out. I think we already established that. Uh, you can find the cover art anywhere <laughs> online. But I like this cover art way better. It really shows. And, and all the features from that edition is ported directly on the Blu-ray. So that's even better. So you get um, 18 deleted and extended scenes. An alternate beginning and ending. Yeah, this is where they actually had uh, different actors to play the part before they eventually got replaced. Uh, they got the making of it, the teen dream, which also throws in with another take, and which essentially it's a featurette, you know, focusing on, you know, how this movie came to be, you know, how the actors got together, and how they talk about the experiences and everything that's done, and the director who essentially uh, talks about, you know, for its own female's perspective of what they do compared to what males do. It has two filmmaker audio commentaries uh, with I Was a Teenage Geek, yeah, featurette, which has you know, all the actors you know, talking back about 
their high school memories, you know, when they were teenagers. And we also learned that they actually were geeks themselves compared to what, uh, you know, the 13-year-old uh, teenage girl was. It also has two music videos, um, Pat Benatar's Love is a Battlefield and Rick Springfield, Jesse's Girl. And, and what do you know, because these are two of my mom's favorites. <laughs> yeah, my mom is uh, a big fan of a Pat Benatar and Rick Springfield. Let me tell you something, even during my childhood days she just goes completely nuts. She starts playing all of their music a lot. She buys a lot of CDs and cassettes and I know she just loves to listen to them. There's a fashion flashback into the 80's. Yeah, this is where they, they find some 80s clothes that would definitely match even for that generation alone and you got a photo gallery to join in yeah so that's cool it's a wonderful set and the transfer is just stunningly beautiful better than ever I mean this is a movie that came out in 2004 so of course the transfer will definitely look just as stunning yeah, it does have some grain structure so you can tell this was shot on a 35 millimeter but some of them could be a little digital you get it. You get it all, you know, for this uh, wonderful set. And okay, this is what it looks like. The cake, the disc. <laughs> Very nice picture. And um, also, this is a flipper. So, yeah, you can see uh, the entire game doing the thriller dance <laughs> right there. That's really cool. <laughs> Really love that. Yeah, it does come with an advertisement for Sony, uh, as, as you can see. But what can you do? <laughs> uh, they also had a soundtrack. I almost couldn't have picked this up when Goodwill had it last, and god dang it, I wish I had picked this up so bad. It basically has like a mix of, of all these 80s songs joining in. I mean, everything you choose besides uh, Pat Benatar and, and Rick Springfield, you got like songs by Michael Jackson's Thriller. Uh, they even had um, Madonna's Crazy for You. Yeah, I know that was essentially in the movie Vision Quest. And all this other stuff included. So that would have been awesome at all. So, yeah. <laughs> of course, the difference between the story here was that. Um, the kid eventually wishes to become 30 years old, you know, just flashing forward to another year. Whereas Big, on the other hand, well, it's basically just a young kid who wishes to become Big, and that's where he got his wish from from the Zoltar machine at a local uh, you know, carnival. So there's a difference here. And it was also set during the the current times at the time. Well, yeah, in, in 1988. So, and the 80s was a different time too. Whereas this movie, you know, that one was dating back to the 80s. That's a flashback, and they just flash forward to current times. Well, then current times of 2004. But we all know how that goes. Oh yeah, and. Also, the fact that this was becoming the biggest selling uh, DVD rental titles to choose from. Yeah, I mean, after its theatrical release. Uh, um, the movie actually did pretty well uh, for its $37 million budget. Only $96.5 million that joins in with the rental costs of the DVD. So, yeah, people essentially rented this movie like hotcakes. And people had bought the film that was selling like hotcakes before the Blu-ray finally came. <laughs> and I hope it does get a 4K release too, uh, someday. I mean, Sony really needs to get their act together and release some more popular titles too, and even ones that are not so popular. But I know they'll eventually give it to Milk Creek and all. Yeah. So maybe I'll track down the soundtrack again if I get to. Um, who knows? Because I'm surprised to know that even the soundtrack was actually... Um, charted at the top 50 of the US Billboard 200 charts, sorry, and I, I couldn't believe it. So. 
And yeah, and of course, uh, like Big, you know, both of them have very smart, intelligent writing too, and it really shows, you know, a coming of age you know, story of what an adolescent, you know, want to become as an adult and become more successful. You get to do whatever you want compared to what you do in your childhood days. You know, you want to have the best time of your life, and it's part of your dream. So. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, let's get right to it. So it stars Jennifer Gardner. You may remember her, of course. Long before she went on to do those Neutrogena commercials, uh, she was doing um, essentially movies like uh, <laughs> Do Where's My Car, Electra. Yeah, she was also in Daredevil when she played Electra. Uh, she was in the TV series Alias. From J.J. Abrams, a great series, and many others to follow. And I know she's done a lot of romantic comedies and other dramas and stuff too. But still a great actress, very beautiful. Uh, Krista B. Allen, who plays the, the younger self. Uh, Mark Ruffalo, of course. Uh, he was in movies like uh, In the Cuts. Yeah, the Avengers movies where he plays Bruce Banner and the Hulk. The, the third person to play after uh, Eric Bana and... Uh, <laughs> uh, Aaron Norton. Yeah. Okay. And I, I know um, he went on to do films like Zodiac and Now You See Me and all that. Okay. Sean Marquette, uh, Judy Greer, uh, I know she's been in other films too, um, like Jawbreaker for instance, that teen comedy, um, but she's done a lot of great work. Uh, Andy Serkis, as you may remember, he was in the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, he was also in uh, King Kong, the 2005 remake from Peter Jackson, who also did the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbits, and all, <laughs> uh, among many others he's done. Uh, yeah, Alexandra Kyle, uh, Kathy Baker, who I know she was in the movie uh, Edward Scissorhands. Uh, she was in a movie called uh, Mr. Frost, which is a Jeff Goldblum uh, thriller, uh, among other films she's done. Uh, Phil Reeves, uh, Lynn Collins, Samuel Ball, Marsha Ibanez, uh, Kirsten Warren, Ashley Benson, Brittany Curran, Brie Larson. Oh yes, and I almost forgot there's another Marvel <laughs> character to join in. Yes, this was long before she went on to play uh, Captain Marvel herself. She was quite young at the time, too, and this was before she went on to do uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and yeah, she went on to win an, an Oscar for the movie Room, and she was in films like uh, Kong Skull Island, uh, she was in a movie called Short Term 12, uh, among many others she's done, and I know she now has a YouTube channel and all, where she's posting her videos and stuff, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, Megan Lusk, uh, Julie Roth, Renee Olstead, and you wouldn't believe this, Gia Mantegna, which she was referred to as Gina at the time. Yes, I actually got to see Gia in the movie, <laughs> because that's of course uh, Mia's sister, and also the second daughter of actor Joe Mantegna. And, he's, and she's very sweet, no doubt. Same goes with Mia, you know. Very proud of him. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I know, I'm just getting right to it. Um, and it's written by both Kathy Yespa and Josh Goldstein. And it's directed by Gary Winnick, who later went on to direct the movie Charlotte's Web in 2006. Yeah, the the adaptation of the E.B. White uh, story, which I love. So that caught me by surprise, too. 
And of course, he did one on the direct uh, Bright's Wars with um, Anne Hathaway and um, Kate Hudson. Yeah, that was a terrible comedy. But he also had produced films like, uh, or I think he also directs them too. He did movies like Tadpole, uh, Pieces of April, uh, and other independent films that he's done in his career. But essentially, he's a great director, too, so that, that's a bit surprise. The movie began set in 1987, which is essentially mid to late 80s right there. We meet an outsider, a teenage geeky girl named Jenna Rink, who's played by Krista B. Allen, who wants to fit in into the popularity crowd, only to be persuaded by the six chicks joining in with their leader, Tom Tom, <laughs> that's played by Alexandra Kyle, yeah, and, and one of the other uh, six chicks is played by none other than Brie Larson in one of her younger years. <laughs> yeah, but there we go. Anyway, they attended at her 13th birthday party just by doing their homework mostly while they actually celebrated it with all the, the foods, the drinks, and all this other stuff that they have set around, even the birthday gifts that they're giving. So, anyway, her best friend, Maddie, which is Matt Flamhalf, who's played by Sean Maquette, decided to give her a birthday gift of a pink dollhouse that he created, um, which has a shot of uh, you know, Jenna, you know, just on their bathtub at the bathroom, you know, taking a bubble bath. Another shot where she was in the bedroom and all of her idols around. So, and even downstairs, you even get a cutout of Rick Springfield in the guitar with uh, Matt as a photographer, you know, taking photos of him while they were watching MTV. Uh, it's, it's a very cute dollhouse that he created. Plus, he froze in a packet of magical wishing dust and spread it around the entire dollhouse on top of the roof. So, hoping that she'll soon be able to get her wish. Meanwhile, the six chicks joining in with all the cutest boys around in class uh, had arrived and tricked Jenna into playing Seven Minutes in Heaven, you know, where they had to have her blindfolded and strap her inside the closet, waiting for each boy to kiss her, so she'll be able to get her surprise. Well, it turns out that the rest of the group had left as soon as possible, and Matt and Jenna are the only ones down in the basement. So now she's feeling very humiliated and actually wishes to become flirty, flirty, and thriving. Yeah, just when the magic dust falls directly towards her when, when she gets knocking on the back and with a dollhouse was head on top. Awakened the next morning, she got her wish. She is 30 years old and she's played by Jennifer Gardner, who was actually wearing a sleepy nighty gown, a very gorgeous one, you know, pink, and it even has a sleeping mask uh, on her <laughs> forehead. Eventually, she's already begun to find out that she's an adult and she has a boyfriend that's in the shower, all naked. <laughs> so she screams. Very shocked, she now lives in a luxurious Fifth Avenue apartment in New York City with no memory of intervening 17 years of her life. Uh, Jenna discovers that she's now an editor of her favorite fashion magazine, Poise, joining in with her co-editor and best friend, uh, Tom Tom, Lucy Whitman now played by Judy Greer, who's a, basically a tough, you know, work hard, 
attitude, um, best friend, and I guess join in as a boss in a way, to bring in on the scoop that often had to rival another magazine, uh, Sparkle, joined by the editor-in-chief, uh, Richard Nealon, you know, a British uh, type uh, who's played by any circuits, only to believe that someone is tipping them off. But then uh, Jenna was just, you know, already feeling very nervous and very, you know, he mutilated at times because now she's trying to find where Maddie's address is at somewhere around so that's why she had to make contact with her um, basically her <laughs> secretary uh, to help her out uh, so then she uh, went on straight directly um, to find where Maddie's living at and that's where we learned that you know Maddie who's played by Mark Ruffalo is a struggling photographer you know he's like taking all these pictures of of all this other stuff that, she, that he has um, he even has a blue velvet poster <laughs> yeah the theatrical poster of a David Lynch film <laughs> yeah as we all know Anyway, um, he begins to unable to fulfill on her past, thinking that she might be high or something. But she apparently had became the head of the six chicks and stopped speaking to him. And we also learned that Lucy isn't exactly the shy and uh, geeky girl that she once was. Of course, we also learned that Lucy, you know has prized surgery, you know, from her nose. But, as the entire um, days, months, nights go around, she was very delighted with her freedom, and you know, going, experiencing adult life, as we know it, learning to, enough to advise all the 13-year-olds around, you know, especially during that sleepover party that they had, uh, well, in that, other scene in the middle of it where yes you did spot it uh, Gia as one of the girls uh, actually in the middle too if, if you assume that but it was actually uh, one of um, that 13 year old uh, girl next door neighbor that's a redhead uh, that's um, part of her friends so yeah they were about to th there was that scene where she was explaining the, the lines directly from a Pep Benatar song, Love is a Battlefield, and yeah, and they all sing along and dance together. That was cool. Uh, I love that. Uh, anyway, now uh, they were getting ready for a party. They were all invited uh, to celebrate for the Poise magazine, but it eventually became disastrous. I mean, already she was, you know, with all her entire room, you know, she was dressed up, you know, filled with tons of fashion, fashionable clothes, you know, like, like tons of dresses, lingerie, and all. Yeah, there's even a moment where she says, what am I, stripper? <laughs> so she dresses up, trying to look exactly more 80-ish style, and just goes around calling Lucy, hi, Tom Tom. <laughs> and then she drinks some uh, non-virgin uh, pina coladas. <laughs> while the way and, and just to lighten this entire party up because eventually all the other guests was about to leave she also invited uh, Matt to join along and that's where they lighted up with Michael Jackson's Thriller <laughs> so <laughs> they were all getting on the dance floor you know posing exactly like how they did it in the music video where they're doing the zombie line dance moves and they even got Richard to do the moonwalk <laughs> Which is very incredible. <laughs> Who would have thought he could do that? Because now he knows, you know, how Michael Jackson does it. <laughs> I love that. That was just fun. The following night, though, uh, Matt actually introduced Jenna to his fiance Wendy, who's played by Lynn Collins. Which then that's what lead to slowly emerging the past, because now this is exactly how things are going to change. We did also learn that. 
yes, you know, she isn't exactly who she seems anymore. She realized, you know, she's been kind of rude and selfish. I mean, since she wasn't exactly the sweet and shy girl as we all know, she, um, she actually pregularized a lot of ideas around, uh, refused to speak to her parents. Yeah, and her parents, of course, are played by, you know, Kathy Baker and Phil Reeves as Beverly and Wayne uh, Wink. <laughs> I know, uh, I mean, at the beginning, you know, they actually started to, you know, bring in their camcorder and started to film all this stuff, too, you know, for her 13th for her birthday. Um, and what's even worse, uh, she had an office sex with a co-worker's husband, and so now the struggling uh, magazine is, is ready to force to redesign, and... Jenna overhears that Lucy is playing the cut out of her redesigned presentation. So, in order to think things through, Jenna's plan was to return to her childhood uh, home in New Jersey, uh, weeping in the same closet exactly where it stands. So, hoping to reunite with her parents and begin to, you know, portray all the try to fix all these mistakes she made, you know, hoping to visit during the holidays and other times. She even apologized to Matt about about the fight that she had and actually hires him to do a yearbook inspired redesigned photo shoots. Yeah, that's where they play that Hillary Duff song, which doesn't work. That doesn't fit the tone right away. They could have just put in some 80s song just to think things through. Uh, but yeah, it was a class of 2004, you know, everyone was getting along and gathered together, you know, try, you know, having the, the march band, the cheerleaders and all, and they're taking all these other types of particular photos from other guests around. It's just perfect. So this was, will definitely save uh, her uh, collage of, of her presentation for the magazine to to think things through, and also since uh, Wendy is eager for Matt to move to Chicago, uh, both Matt and Jenner are beginning to fall in love with each other. So it shows that they have terrific chemistry. It sparks. They were actually having some, you know, ratsies. The yeah, the candy where it turns your tongue red. <laughs> that was sweet. And they eventually kiss. But that's what led to this mistake that's going to happen because now this is where things are going to go completely wrong. Just when she was trying to make things better, was when Lucy found out a dark secret after uh, her presentation fails. Found out that she went inside her office and started to, f to take out um, all these um, important. Uh, letters uh, from the magazine and this is where she's ready to send all of Matt's photos directly into the competitor magazine and that's where it happened and now you know trying to follow the advice of all the 13 year olds around and everything going around yeah well, I mean love is a battlefield right but to make things right you know She's about to go directly to her house, you know, because the wedding's about to start, hoping to greet uh, Matt uh, on his future. And didn't mean about what happened and and all, and which next uh, she took the Dow house she had, and and she just wishes back to becoming 14 again. So now that hoping that if he if she was going to get one more chance to, to make uh, Matt change his mind by not marrying Wendy and, and be with uh, Jenna, then things are going to be a lot better. But he felt like, you know, well, things happened in the past, you know, we're going to go for something different in our lives, but we'll still be friends no matter what. So, of course, she finally gets her second chance. She went back to being 13. <laughs> she 
She eventually kisses Matt as a big surprise, and then she went up to Lucy, Tom Tom, to tell her to buzz off and calls her a biatch. And then finally it ends directly where now both Jenna and Matt are married together. And they finally got their dream house that they always wanted. And hoping they'll have kids too to experience their cherished memories and all. So they live happily ever after. Now this is definitely a delightful and fantastic romantic comedy, you know, going for the body switching types around. And it really works. I mean, 2004 was the year where we were getting so many of those teen and as well as adult comedies like this, all of which had became successful, while some of them became major flops, or they tried this hard, but then, you know, half of the movies were bad, but most of these gems right here are essentially good. Yeah, I mean, movies like Napoleon Dynamite, Mean Girls, and this one come to mind. But then, of course, you have other films like The Cinderella Story, and Sleepover, and New York Minute come to mind, and those were awful. But nevertheless. <laughs> but this was well made, well done. Um, told the story eventually straight. For it. Um, it really shows how a teenage girl, as geeky as she can be, can eventually become more powerful, you know, flirty, thriving, sometimes quirky, but also very strong and, and invulnerable, too. And that's what Jenna Reg eventually became. And Jennifer Gardner really nailed this performance perfectly. I mean, she's definitely the America's sweetheart we all knew. I mean, she's very beautiful. I mean, even with all the fashions that she wore, and that cute smile that she does, too. I mean, you can even see the ears, and, and this wonderful uh, brunette that she had. Yeah, wonderful brown hair. I mean, this is just... She's so cute. You, you, you want to fall in love with her, no matter what. Um, <clears throat> Mark Ruffalo was excellent, still is, too. And as um, soon to be uh, boyfriend, but also best friend, of course, of Jenna's, you know, Matt. I mean, you could tell he was struggling so hard as a photographer, trying to be as successful as he could be. Even though we learned that he had a fiance in his life, and then, but hoping Jenna will try to fix that for sure because of all the mistakes she made. I mean, she fixes all of that. But we know that this guy is very special and he knows what he can to actually learn from all the mistakes she did. Because <clears throat> maybe she should have she listened to him from the start. Because we know that the six chicks are up to no good. Especially Tom Tom. <laughs> yeah, Lucy Whitman. And Judy Greer actually played her um, essentially um, excellent, too. I mean, yes, you could tell that even though, you know, she's, she's your typical uh, chick. Does what she can. I mean, she's, she's, she's strong, independent, working as hard as she can. Trying to try to do what she could for her presentation of this competitor fashion magazine, but I know that's gonna not turn out so great until you know Jenna does hers and becomes more successful with the the yearbook and spar photos. But that led to, of course, jealousy and everything. Um, but of course, I mean she's also the toughest one to actually you know bring Jenna in. <laughs> All right. Uh, Any Circus is just, just hilarious and excellent in that role as the editor in chief, uh, Richard. I mean, yes, of course the he, he was very inspirable. He's funny. I mean, he really nails that performance really well. Um, 
the rest of the cast was just excellent too. I mean, they're right on target. You know, all the girls that they chose in the movie, I mean, they essentially look exactly how they were mature at their age and how what she experienced too, you know, during two decades apart, you know, the 80s and, and the 2000s. I mean, yes, fashions have changed solely after that. I mean, people thought the 80s had the worst fashions, well, compared to what today's fashions are. Uh, especially in that scene where you actually saw like a bunch of uh, models around even wearing all these yeah all these uh, women around actually wearing their fongs uh, underneath their low-rise jeans I mean wow <laughs> like everyone has to look this sexy and, and sensual <laughs> that was such a trend these days <laughs> um, but this movie had a lot of hearts and soul it has a lot of great writing right there and it really shows you know how Jenna can change you know she can fix all the the past mistakes she made and just improve them better so with a lot of wishing to do I mean this is how she can really uh, portray it and, and persuade and it. that's what I love about that and the soundtrack is incredible, of course. Tons of 80s songs to join. You know, everything from Madonna to Rick Springfield, from Pat Benatar to Michael Jackson. This is a very awesome soundtrack that I wish I could pick this up from Goodwill. And I hope I will later on. Um, but nevertheless, uh, there's even a funny moment too, was when Jenna's boyfriend suddenly dances and ready to strip off. Well, yeah, the... The vanilla ice song, Ice Ice Baby plays, <laughs> and she's just in, totally embarrassed having to see that. Just when she wanted to play a game for him, <laughs> that was pretty fun. Um, and all these other scenes too are just hilarious, and it works. And, and there's a lot of sweet and tender moments here, and all. I, I just love it. It's just a sweet film. Highly recommend it. So anyway, that's 13 going on 30. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'm proud to be 36, flirty, and thriving. Well, well, okay, hence the, the flirty part, but whatever. So I'm basically 36, awesome, and thriving, in a way. Bye.